All right, we got us a ice cream machine here that's not one to pump. We turn on the pumps, and we come down to here, and it's actually pumping, but it's not pulling none of the water in. Come up to here, push our button in, nothing happens. No ch -ch type noises or nothing. So we're gonna go ahead and take this apart and see what's going on in here. Okay, now we're going to check this here and see if this is jammed up or what's going on. Okay, so now I can't help but wonder what exactly is plugging it up. Because it's kicking on, so that means our pressure switch is working and sensing that it's no pressure on it. Which is this hose right here. This is supposed to be at the back. Judging from the way this here is, and it's incorrect. It wouldn't surprise me if they haven't changed their hoses for a while. So let's take a look. able to get it back into position. That's not going to be something easy to do for just normal people that don't do this every day. Otherwise you have to unhook all the hoses and feed it back through. I'm going to run something up through there and see if they got it plugged up with something. So there's a good chance that maybe it's gummed up full of nastiness or something. You can get some number 10 gauge wire because that sometimes goes up there and turns. Ew, I can feel some gumminess. I'd say we just gum full of crap. I would say since we've got water pumping out on the one side that's going up to there, it should make it all the way up to the top. Just common sense. Here's basically what we got going on today. We'll run cleaning solution through here. It's got milkstone dissolver and all that in it. And these are certified to be cleaned in place. So we'll go ahead and run some of that solution through. They might be not using as strong of a solution. All right, we got some sanitizer solution here. To make sure you use stuff that's actually for an ice cream machine, not just something that's sanitizer in general. Um, got it in there, got it all. Next up, you do not want to use nothing super hot. If you can put your hand in there, it's probably fine, but if it's burning your hand, you got it too hot. Let's go on. You should be able to pump up at least halfway, even while it's. Uh, under pressure. Looks like we lost the spring and the knob for that. Yeah, we're not rising. It's not pumping with a squat. It's getting a little bit, but not much. Oh, goodness. I wonder if that... We're looking behind there. That water had to go somewhere. Yeah, that doesn't look very good. I'll pop this panel off, take a look inside here, see what we got going on. Alright, found our problem. The hose split up here on the pressure switch. You can see the water shooting out all over the place. These hoses were stainless steel originally, and then uh, they switched them over. It's hard to say what happened since, but basically it broke. These pumps right here, we've had a lot of issues with those getting gummed up full of crud, which is why we switched them to the hoses. The uh, stainless steel tube they had originally on those leaked air back here at the uh, fitting, the flare fitting that was originally there, and it would cause all kinds of issues. Okay, you can see the split. Yep, everything's open. All right, we're just gonna put a new hose on there. The Loctite I use is the 567. Go ahead and we'll get that on here just a little bit. So just kinda get it just on the threads there, make sure there's none on the inside. Please. This is your pressure switch. Basically, it shuts the system down when it's got enough pressure in there. A lot of people don't realize that ice cream is 40% air. You inject air in there, 
uh, whether it be with a force-fed machine like this where you're pressurizing it or if it's a gravity machine you'll have a carburetor and that'll meter it in there there's the old one there's the new one okay we get that sent through get on there all the way you definitely want to make sure you have the power off uh, there's 230 volts running around in here and it kind of hurts Gonna go ahead and clean our filter up here too. That's for the cabinet down below. Okay, put this wire tie on there so they don't pull it back through. When you have to tear this machine apart as much as I've had to tear it apart, wire tie works just fine. There's our air adjustment right there. This pump here has a tendency to be gummed up really bad. What happens is stuff leaks, it comes back into here, you got an air leak in here, it'll get back into the check valve, which is that silver thing. The piston, all that gets gummed up full of crud. And then that's a bad day. Alright, let's try this again. We got a whole new thing of sanitizer. Pump on. There we go, it's filling up nice and quick. It ended up filling up and it shut off, which is a good thing. You can hear the pressure we got going on in there. So we're gonna go ahead and tell her to clean. We'll let it run through its five minute clean cycle. And uh, then we'll get it, uh, get her refilled, primed, and make sure it freezes down to temperature. We're gonna make sure we drain some of this out here too, because we don't want any of this nastiness here getting mixed in with the good stuff. Another reason why you wanna make sure this freezes down too, it'll help keep it from going liquid to liquid, because they're right now both pressurized. So I'm cycling it a little bit to get it all pushed to the front, splash all the net leftovers out of here. So once that's done, we'll go ahead and prime her up and uh, get this thing froze down. All right, got her all mixed up. Got our probes on there. Go ahead and prime up. This is where we're gonna prime a little bit of this out. Go ahead and let it push all the sanitizer out. A nice clean solid stream of mix. That makes sure that your sanitizer is completely out of there. And then uh, go ahead and let her fill up and then we'll kick her to freeze. Okay, got her filled up. Turn her on. Push to freeze. Check max, it should be more than adequate. Anyhow, we're starting to freeze down here. Vanilla seems to be nice if the pump is on. There we go. Make sure pumps are on. That's not good. All right. Yeah, we've got issues with that. That's great. Yeah, that pump's got problems. Yeah, that looks really icy. That or they just haven't been using it much. Start to look a little better. If ice cream sets around too long, basically, you'll beat the mix to death to the point where it breaks down the enzymes and stuff into it and it won't freeze up and make a nice product. Then it looks like this icy, nasty stuff. That's really hard and not uh, the nice texture you want, not nice and fluffy. Okay, we're down at 16 degrees. It's a little colder than what it should be. Okay, basically you got your pump on. Clamp that off, put your finger over it. And it's not shutting off. It should shut off in three seconds. And there's no, no air at all coming out. This is probably the worst thing about this machine is this pump has a tendency to let the uh, mix back into past the check valve and uh, into the piston area. I've rebuilt this pump probably at least four, five, six times. And I've got it sealed and I've replaced the parts and I've replaced the check valve. I replaced everything in it. And if there's one thing I would change, it would be that right there. And they did change it on the new machines. All right, we've already tore this completely apart. Replaced all the seals and stuff inside of here. Just spraying and a piston. Changed out the check valve. Got a new check valve in there. Worst all the gunk out of this thing. Got that prepped. This thing is a major pain in the butt. I'm not going into great detail for a purpose here. Basically, it took forever to learn ice cream machines. There's absolutely very little help out there on them. It's gonna give you a broad idea of what's going on inside the machine. So anyhow, we got that there. 
I've learned how to do it with the pump still in place. This makes a humongous difference. These are little tips here that you can find to be helpful. So uh, biggest thing is make sure the power is off. These wires are live. One leg is always live. And the control board is very expensive if you blow it up. All right, got everything back together there. I'm going to show you the quick test on how to test this. We're going to turn the pump on. We're going to put our finger over top of it. and It should stop in three seconds area. If it does, then chances are it's working the way it should. Here's the pumping. Thousand one. Thousand one. So good. It's shutting off like it should. You can feel the pressure coming out of it. And that's what you want. What I did here is I actually used a clamp on there. It's just a Harbor Freight Special. Works really well. If I would not have put that on there, all the pressurization of the uh, barrel would have started squirting back out through here. So you definitely want to keep that on there. I'm going to put it back on the uh, barb fitting there and then uh, kick on the pump. That way pressure is building up. Then I'm going to release that and that's going to help push anything back that might have gotten in there. And then uh, we'll go ahead and see how the overrun is after that. Overrun is the amount of air that is in the ice cream. Usually you want 35 to 40 percent uh, based on regular soft serve. There's different amounts for different types of ice cream. But there's absolutely no air in the system at all. Um, so, going to let that run, and then we'll kick her on and let her do her thing. This right here is one of my favorite little sets right now. It's uh, got the offset wrench. It's made by gear wrench. It's got all the different metric. It's got standard, stars, squares, straight, Phillips, and some Allen wrenches. With I have a link for this in my description down below through one of my kits. Anyhow, the chocolate's starting to look a little bit better. I'm gonna do a overrun check yet. One thing I always like to do is make sure my time's correct. That way when something's wrong, you'll know exactly when it happened. But as far as uh, performance wise, getting down around six, which I think it just shut off. And we're 11 and dropping on our vanilla side. Gonna fill this cup all the way up. Scrape off the top. And then we're gonna weigh it. Take my weight scale, which I also use this for my R290. And I know that this thing weighs, weighs 408 grams, so we're at 294. So you just subtract 294 from 408 and divide that number into the 294. So we take 408 minus 294 equals that, divide it back into 294, we're at 38% overrun, which is good. So we're fine there. Now I check our vanilla, same scenario. Probably gonna be a little low because we didn't have a full barrel when we first started. So 344 equals that divided by 344. Yeah, it's 18%. The uh, reason why is the uh, ice cream that was in there is beat to hell and back. So basically, we got to flush that out, and then it should be good to go. One of the last things you want to make sure you check is your temperature. You want somewhere between 17 and a half and 19 and a half degrees on average. Some ice creams can get away with higher or lower temperatures, but this particular ones where I'm at here. Works really good between this area here and about 18 and a half. And it was able to make a good ice cream cone, so we're good to go. Everything's back up and going. Texture looks fairly good. Temperature's right in line, so if you skippy. That wraps this one up. If you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Ask any comments down below. Make sure you check out the description area for any links to tools so you can help support the channel. Till next time, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.